the last All right, so let's do some introductions. Again, my name is Tom. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Uh, we flew all the way over here yesterday. It was a wonderful flight. Uh, a good time was had by all. Um, really happy to be here. And I want to introduce Amanda. So Hello. Amanda, tell us about you, your name, what you do. Yeah, so I'm Amanda Renfro. Um, I've been at Steamroller for a little over eight years, and I'm currently one of the head of animations at Steamroller. So Employee number two. Employee number two. We started at five, and now we're... Over 200. Over 200. Yeah, so we've expanded. And there's two hots now. There's two head of animations. Um, so Steve Miller Grano couldn't join us here today, but uh, I'm going to pass it to Jalil. Um, so hi, I'm Jalil. I'm one of the... Well, so, sorry guys, I'm old. Still figuring out this whole technology <laughs> thing. Uh, so, uh, my name is Joel Sadul. I'm one of the co-founders of Steamroller uh, Animation now. It used to be Steamroller Studios. And uh, my background is animation as well. I was an animator for 18 years, I guess. It's quite a while. Um, and uh, now I am, I used to be the CEO of, an, of Steamroller, but now I am the CCO. I got uh, fired from my role. Um, that's, not, that's not true. Uh, but uh, now I take care of the creative side of the studio because we are very much moving in a telling our own stories and making our own films and TV shows. So that's been kind of a dream, you know, of ours as a studio. So that's why what I take care of now. So I'm going to pa pass this on to Ben. Hi, everyone. I'm Ben Rishi. Um, I'm the head of story at Steamroller Studios. Um, I originally come from the animation world as far as a, a CG animator and a 2D animator but I made the crossover into story a couple or seven years ago. So, um, and I've been at Steamroller for about two and a half years and I'm loving it. And we're working on some really, really cool stuff. So, which I can't tell you about. Can you see what I'm working on? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Oh, what a great yeah. show them. Yeah. <coughs> cool, that leaves me. So I'm Josh Carroll. I'm the head of the art department at Steamroller Studios, also creative director on the IP side. Uh, I've been at Steamroller for just under two years and been in the animation industry about 10. Thank you, guys. Um, so, Jalil, I know you don't really like to brag that often, but maybe some of the notable um, movies that you've worked on or animated in? Garfield 2, A Tale of Two Kitties. Oh. <laughs> very proud of that movie. Thank you very much. You got anything else? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got to work on... Uh, the first two Chronicles of Narnia, Avatar, Rise of the Apes. Uh, I was at DreamWorks for Rise of the Guardians and How to Train Your Dragon 2. Um, and then, um, anything else? And um, Water Horse. Number two. And Lots of other films. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> all of them, but uh, yeah. But I, th I think it's important, and one of, one of my questions that I love to ask these guys is um, about their background. Um, because everybody's got a kind of an interesting path on how they got to where they got at the studio. Um, and I thought you'd kind of be interested in hearing some of that. So, uh, Amanda, I'm just going to ask you, and if we just go down the line. Yeah. Yeah, I put guess you on the spot. So your background before you got into animation. Before I got into animation, well, I, I grew up in Las Vegas, and I wanted to be a crime scene investigator once upon a time ago. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't know what it is about animators and crime scene investigators. <laughs> my favorite movie is Clue, right? It is. That's why. My favorite movie is Clue. Guilty. I mean, Tim Curry, you know. Um, but uh, Finding Nemo was a big inspiration for me, which got me into the animation industry. Um, went to SCAD for animation. I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, I knew SCAD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Um, had zero interest in 2D, and I was like, they force you to take a course, which was a lot of fun. I love it. I love drawing, but it was not my forte. I wanted to be in the CG uh, realm, and uh, had a job shortly after school. But the most interesting part was how I got to Steamroller. Um, I had found a random studio in Florida, Game Dev Map, and I saw that they were developing a game called Dead with a Forgotten Curse. Um, decided to meet up, met with them, loved them. They loved me. A very Dude. casual interview. Why she stayed, I have no idea. We were in the back of a t-shirt shop, and it, the whole place was a wreck. And here's these three dudes. Hi, we want to make a video game. Hi, man, Dad, you want to join us? Sure. Yeah, and then I was like, but we don't have any animation. And I'm like, OK, wait, I'm an animator. But can you do production? And I was like, let's do it. Why not? Um, so yeah, that was, that was probably that's the best interview ever. It, it was legitly full with gym equipment and dust. but. Um, They've hopefully liked me since, so still there. 
And we're not right. still in a t-shirt shop too. We're and not we're not. In a yeah, no, we're not. Shop. Yeah. No. I think I think the next evolution was in a church, if I'm not mistaken. A no, bank. We, were, we moved to oh, the bank. top of a yeah. bank first, and that's where we grew to about 15, 20 people. Yeah, just about. And then we moved to a church where we grew to 50, and then from there we're like, all right, we got to move to something much bigger than we. Now we're still there, and we can house quite a few people. So like our little campus now is a huge city. And Jula, how about your background? Um, so I, um, well I'm from an island called Mauritius off the coast of Madagascar, and I grew up there for 18 years and then left to go study engineering in uh, Singapore. Can you hear me? In Singapore. And then um, two years I realized that wasn't for me. So I was like, I want to do comic books. Um, and I couldn't draw like him, but I wanted to draw really, you know, I, wa I wanted to be a good artist, so I moved to the U.S. and went to a tiny little school in Pennsylvania called uh, uh, Edinburgh. Damn. Oh. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's nobody goes there. But it's a really good school uh, um, and uh, was a really good school. I love Edinburgh. Uh, it's embarrassing. Uh, but after Edinburgh, I decided to, you know, I needed to, to learn, you know, 3D because there was no 2D at the time because I graduated with a 2D background. So then I self-taught, you know, I learned Maya and uh, first uh, for about five months and then applied to about 70 different companies and I got rejected by quite a few of them and finally I got an offer from uh, Rhythm and Use. Anyone? No? Yeah, they're not around anymore. They, used to, they did the first Narnia films and Babe and all that stuff. So, um, so I moved to LA, got a job there and that was the start of my career. But I was a dishwasher before that for about two years and loved dishes. <laughs> and I uh, still take care of dishes at home. Um, and, uh, but, you know, decided to move into animation afterwards. By the way, don't let him fool you. Word on the street is he taught Ben everything he knows about drawing. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he is the mentor of mentors. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> Thank you, Chula. How are you, Ben? Um, before I was in the animation industry, I was in high school. So, um, <laughs> no, I... I uh, I went to school at the, I grew up in San Diego. I went to school at the Art Institute of San Diego right after school because my best friend said he was going and I told him that I was better at, at art than him. So <laughs> I was gonna go. I really wanted to be an optometrist actually before that. And uh, I, I didn't want to go to eight years of school. So. Get it, Joe. I see. Oh, I get it. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> my daughter would be proud of you yeah. right now. Yeah. The dad jokes. So investigator, engineer, optometrist, yeah. okay. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I had a really crazy path. I didn't finish college. Um, I out. met, yes, I was a dropout. I met uh, one of my mentors, my first mentor is Alex Topetti. He worked at uh, Disney for 20 years as a cleanup artist. And he told me to quit school and to live with him. Um, and I quit school, went to the Academy of Art for a semester, quit that school because I was running out of money. Went back down to LA, LA and actually lived with him. Went to Animation Mentor. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, was uh, a CG animator for a bit. So I went to Blue Sky. I worked at Sony for a bit. And then I worked at Brazen Animation out in Dallas for about seven and a half years. Um, and that's when I uh, left and uh, started working with Steamroller. And that's where I'm at now. You're so here forever. I'm here forever. Hey. Forever. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my story. So. In a very short, condensed <laughs> way. So, nice, Josh. Yeah. So for me, I, I'm a bit of a non-traditional uh, entrant into the animation industry. So I started uh, actually as a graphic designer um, in the art industry. Did that professionally um, out of a state school uh, in Louisiana called LSU. Um, I did that professionally for about three years before I really kind of got the feeling that. You know, all the things that I was loving about storytelling, about film, about animation, just wasn't, I wasn't getting that kind of creative fix out of graphic design. Um, it was, for me, it was a lot, uh, be de very dependent upon, like, who your clients were and what, what sort of, how far they would let you go with the projects, right? Um, so in about 2008, I decided I w wanted to get back into animation for real. Um, so I went to Ringling. Anybody? No? Okay. Wow. Um, so I enrolled at Ringling College of Art and Design um, at, I think I was 30 when I started at Ringling. So um, it was definitely... He's very old. Very, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wisdom. Age brings wisdom. No. Um, 
Yeah, so for me, you know, going back to school, it was very much uh, with this kind of notion of, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting a second career. Um, so I went through Ringling. Uh, I got to do uh, a really amazing internship at uh, Disney Feature. Um, my sort of creative path was modeling. So um, I did my, did my um, internship, graduated, and then started working with Ben at Brazen as a modeler. Um, and then along the way, just really started exercising kind of my muscles in creative direction, um, art direction, stuff like that, and kind of eventually just moved up the ladder kind of naturally, very organically to creative director. So that's why I, where I'm at now. And I left Brazen and have been at Steamroller for just over, just under two years. Forever now. Yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. Jalil has it like a, like a garage or a, or a closet or something that all these forevers get kind of shackled into it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good word. I'm not going anywhere. The, the only closet he has is Legos. Yeah. <laughs> so My Lego collection. Yeah, he's got his <laughs> Lego collection. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of my um, – there's always people out there that inspire us to do certain things, right? Um, and sometimes people need to go find inspiration at the beach or what have you. Um, or wherever they find it, nature. But I think there's always one person that's kind of always stands out along the journey. So Amanda, I wanted to ask you, um, who's who kind of inspired you along the way? Oh, I mean, Jilla. <laughs> wow, see? <laughs> no, um, that was no, all planned. That was all planned. Um, no, honestly, I, a little bit of how I operate is uh, I'm very who I'm surrounded by, um, especially within a work environment. Like I'm one that loves working within a studio because I get very easily inspired. I love seeing what other people are working on, whether it's in animation or in another department, because um, there's always things that you can bring into your own work to really elevate it and just learn something new. Um, so for me, although there's many, many, many people that have been an inspiration, I will say that probably one of the biggest influences for me is when I'm sitting in a room full of artists and I just have people of all different trades and all different styles um, showing their work and giving me feedback on my work. So I'm a little bit more of a in the bubble uh, is a big, really, really big inspiration for me. So that's the people at the studio. That's these guys. How about you, Jalal? And I'm racking my brain. Um, Amanda. It's, <laughs> I mean, pay back. <laughs> ben. Ben. Uh, ben. <laughs> Um, you know, it's it's a really hard question because you know, as you as you grow and as you um, um, mature and as you, um, you you find different people that you want to be like, you want to become, or people that you aspire to, and and I think it's it's um, yeah, it's difficult to really pick one person, but I can say when I was younger, I think um, Steven Spielberg was to me, you know, the the director that I'd like, you know, to be until I realized, you know, direction was uh, was incredibly difficult that I said, I don't think I could ever be a director when I understood what it meant to be a director. It's not just, you know, telling stories. And we can we can talk about that in depth because I do see a lot of students. I want to direct my own movie, but it, you know, that was my goal to someday tell my own story, but I had to build a studio uh, to be able to today you know, tell my own story, and it and it's not something that I would advise you know everybody to do. Go build a studio and then do it. It is absolutely, you know, incredibly difficult to do. We, I, I never jumped into this business to make a studio. It was all out of passion. And well, take the next step, take the next step, take the next step. And at one point, we looked back and said, "Wow, we have a studio." Um, so to your question, um, so as I went to college, I think I started. Uh, uh, my teacher in school became my inspiration, and mm -hmm. his name is Mike Gens, and he was um, an animator at Disney back in the day, um, and he was an in-betweener, actually. He was not a, a key animator until he, he got to work on Tarzan. And uh, he was an inspiration for me, because my father always taught me. I remember when I was um, 13, I think, when Jurassic Park came out, which was the movie that made me want to be an animator. Um, I was in the car, we were, all, we were quiet for a bit, and I turned to my dad and I said, Dad, one day I'm going to work with Steven Spielberg. He almost smacked me. <laughs> you know, keep in mind, I'm on a tiny island in Madagascar. We just watched you know, Jurassic Park, and I'm telling my dad I'm going to work with Steven Spielberg. And he was like, you're not special enough to be. These are people that he didn't mean it in that way, right? But to him, he's like, my kid here wants to work with a director in America. What is he talking about? But what he taught me was the achievable dream. He says, 
He told me, he's like, don't think so big. Do your math homework and achieve that first. Then when you get that right, do the next one, do the next one. So I grew up never looking too far. I always said, I'm going to do the next thing the best I can. And then I'm going to do the next thing the best I can. And at one point, I turned around and said, oh, my God, I got an animation studio I'm running. Really, that's what happened. After four years is when I realized we need to take care of this because this is not this is serious. Now we can we can tell our own stories. I did get to work with Steven Spielberg at some point, but uh, uh, my dad was already dead at that point, so I didn't get to say in your face, Dad. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I think inspiration, you know, I I you will see will change as you grow and as you get better. And I think I've had a lot, not you know, tagging from what Amanda was saying. You know, I think I've had a lot of people that inspired me, and I keep getting inspired every day. Today, it's my team. I can't do what these guys do. You know, I watch Josh work as a leader and I'm like, man, I want to be like him. You know, the way he teaches the team, the way he inspires the team, you know, to, to, to do this beautiful, you know, artwork. And then Ben, watching him draw, I just want to be like Ben when I grew up. You know, and Amanda, I mean, as an animator, she's fantastic. But as a, as a head of department, it's incredible to watch how she trains the team and brings the best out of all of them. So me watching them work, I'm like, I want, you know, I wish I could be like this, but I don't, I know I wasn't. I was very much a person that was my head down, work hard, work hard, work hard. Hopefully <laughs> now we've built a place where they can be happy. Oh no, she's unhappy with what we're saying. Bye. Oh no. <laughs> uh, anyways. Oh, that was great, Jalil. Uh, so Ben, I, I have a uh, question for you. I'm, I'm not putting you on the spot, but uh, I want to okay. know like the, the, the most important lesson you've learned along the journey Hmm, the first important lesson I've learned. Um, I would say it's a, it's a difficult one. Um, I think for me, as an artist, um, the most important lesson I've learned is how to break down anything that I need to learn into simple steps and be able to apply that in order to be able to... Uh, in my career, I have gone through being a CG animator, a 2D animator, a character designer, a storyboard artist, 2D effects artist, now VFX artist-ish stuff. Um, and every single one of those things were a task that needed to be done. And being able to break down and study something has been crucial for my career to be able to continue to grow. Um, and I think that's one of the, and it was a lesson I kind of stumbled upon. And it was through a lot of watching other artists work listening to how people study, how people break down work, um, and just applying that to my own, the way I think, and then being able to kind of figure it out through that. But I just recommend anyone, you know, just keep on learning different things, you know? It's not, n I feel like the art industry is not just a niche thing, you know? It's not just one thing. Backgrounds, animation, story, all that stuff feeds into the same thing. And I feel like if you guys can learn how to, even if at a certain level, learn other parts of the process, all that builds up into a cohesive kind of balanced whole. Um, and you don't want to be just siloed in one si certain part. I know I don't want to be, uh, just because I get bored really easily. So, um, but I feel like every single thing uh, that I've learned has kind of built up into where I'm at today, uh, which is really awesome. And it. it it's still going to keep going until I die, you know? So I'm excited to learn more, but I hope that was. Thank you. That was yeah. great. Yeah. How about you, Josh? Um, I think for me, you know, one of the things I feel like I've really uh, looked back on and analyzed along the way is it took me a long time to really be able to see myself as an artist objectively, right? Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've always felt like I was very hard on myself, very self-critical, very uh, very unable to step outside of myself to see, am I really good at this? Am I really succeeding? Am I really successful? Um, and for me, I think it took, um, the, the lesson became about being able to gather input from the people around you to really understand, um, you know, is, is are, are, my, are my intentions, are my skills, are they all aligning? Am I, am I kind of becoming, you know, the artist I want to be? Or am, a, and am I able to really sort of analyze what I'm producing and be able to say, is it good or is it not good, right? Um, I guess my point is, is that at some point you have to learn to divorce sort of the, the personal nature of art 
to step outside of it a little bit and to just receive critique to be able to say, okay, can I get better in these things? Yes or no. Don't tie it so much to your sort of self-worth and, and the, your value as a person. I know art is super, super personal to all of us, um, but it, it took me a long time to really get to the point where I could really feel successful and, and honestly look at what I do and really like the things I produce. Um, and a lot, a lot of that was like having the right people at the right time just coming in to reaffirm, you know, like um, to the to the earlier question about, um, you know, who inspires you. I, I had a I had a one professor in design school who I remember very vividly. I was very much like in my head. I was like, man, I, I'm not good at this. I'm not succeeding. And there was this one moment where she stepped in and was just like, you know, she did. She we had to do an exercise where she described like my art to me. And she was like, you know just went on the list of things and I was like, whoa, really? You see all that in me? Um, and, and, and so I, I, think, I think the lesson is don't, don't let those sort of, that sort of internal criti critical criticism run you down. Like get outside of it a little bit and, and hear, hear other people's perspectives on you and what you're doing and that kind of thing. And, and uh, let, it, let it be, let be affirmed by it, I guess, if that makes sense. And let the process play out. Yes. I feel like it's a lot of just doing it. Yes. And you're never going to be, you're never going to be, when you start, you're growing, right? Yes. You're never going to be perfect right off the bat. No one ever does this just right away, right? Yeah. Nice. I'd love to share. Do you mind if we yeah. take a break? I, I want to <laughs> share what we are working on right now. Maybe that will spark some questions as well from you guys. Because we don't want it just to be us talking about stuff. I uh, would love to share. Um, so have you guys seen the short film Spice Frontier? Oh, they haven't seen it. We should play it. You guys want to watch a short film? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yay, okay. Unplug the, unplug the computer again. Well, no, let's plug the... Oh, you got to get there. Okay, so we're going to show you two. So it's an eight-minute short film. It's not super long, and it's called Spice Frontier. Can we do it? Yep. We have the technology. We have the technology. <laughs> and um, so now we're developing the TV show you know, for it, which is super exciting, you know, uh, uh, for us as a, as a studio. But we'll share with you guys. Who has seen it? Oh, oh yeah, oh. winner. <laughs> Did you like it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys see it? How's it look over there, Tom? Oh, there's it. Did we break it? Is it back? No. The projector's not on. Is it back? Uh, spice spice frontier. frontier. Instead of Space Frontier, it's Spice Frontier. Got it? It's about <laughs> spices. You see the In space. Oh, there it is. It's turning on. Pick it up. Do you want to have a, do you want to ask more questions while we're waiting for it? Yeah. Yeah, how about in the back? That's okay. Dude, that self-doubt stays with you for the rest of your career. I mean, it's. It, <laughs> yeah. it, it, yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to be that, you know. Yeah. But no, it stays with you. But but you but you embrace it. You know, you work with it. It's it's really what fuels what makes you better, because you know when you doubt yourself, you're self-aware. You know, you never want to be to be an artist who just thinks they know everything. So that self-doubt is awesome. Embrace it. Um, allow others around you to tell you if your work is is good. You know, sometimes you yourself, I mean, it's good to get to a point where you know you're doing good work because you, you, you are self-aware, but don't go out there and be like, look how great I am, right? Let the team, the team will tell you when you're starting to, to do good work and you can feed on that. So, and don't think you wasted your time, you know, before that, everything, everything you've done and learned. Uh, what's, what's your, um, what's your focus? Um, modeling. modeling? Mm-hmm. 
Right. Yep. Where do you want to go? We're hiring like crazy, so yeah. Well, and and you you'll figure it out. I mean, like Ben was saying and Josh was saying, and Amanda, you know, it, it takes time to get there. You can't rush that stuff. Sometimes it's good to just learn everything, and then you get to a point. And your your studies, you know, your learning process does not end in one year. You know, that certificate doesn't matter to anybody. It's your portfolio that really matters. We will never ask you for your degree. We, we will never ask you that. We will take a look at your portfolio. So you are constantly learning, constantly growing. So um, I would say the self-doubt, embrace it, work with it. Just know that if you are passionate, you love it. In the darkest time, you're able to just go, no, I want to work on a movie. And it fuels you. If you get to a point where you're, you, you have to animate and you or you have to do something that's related to to your future to your art to your passion but you end up playing video games you know all night you got to question that right you got to be like ah oh, but if you go no but i really want to do this you look at this awesome game that just came out elden ring just came out and you're like i can't how many people are nodding here how many people are playing elden ring still playing elden stop <laughs> third <laughs> 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 Uh, no, I'm totally kidding. But but I'm saying, you know, you focus on what you want to do, but you're able to plow through the dark times. You know, when you don't want to do it, you still do it. Because when you force through it and you make a breakthrough, it fuels you to continue. But because a lot of people that they just get to that point where they stop and they're like, I don't think, you know, and they take a break and the break goes for oh, two days, three days, four days. It's hard for them to come back in. Sometimes when you get to that block, continue through, plow through, and be like, one more, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it another try. I'm gonna restart it, I'm gonna rework it, because it really fuels you for the next step. Don't know if I answered your question, but hopefully I did. I have something yeah. to add to it, actually. Yeah. I do as well. Yeah, I, I, would say, I would say also, you know, pick, pick the thing that you really resonate with about the, you know, about the industry, about animation. Like for me, my path was modeling because I felt like I wanted to be very character centric, but I wasn't an actor. I didn't feel like I really got the performance nature of animation. So, but I really wanted to bring things to life. So in my mind, crafting the character models and things like that was kind of my way to sort of, you know, into that. Now, I think the, the additional thing is, you know, when you're comparing your work or when you're, th when you're looking at your work to sort of to cr critique it to say, am I, am I there yet? Look at look at at professional work. Cr you know, critique your work against professional work because that's who you're competing with. Yeah. That's that's the the goal, right? Not um, with your classroom, right? Yeah, do it with yeah. And then and then and then when you see that oh it's not there yet, ask you know ask around. Ask you know we're shameless plug. We're having you know portfolio reviews and stuff at our booth, um, thirteen ten, over in the exhibition hall. You guys can sign up. Come over and we'll take a look at it and we can talk through the things that we feel like could help you, you know, really refine that and that kind of thing. Developing your eye as an artist is going to be the thing that helps you the most. And then learning how to tr sort of channel that into your discipline is going to be the thing that makes you kind of put it over the top, right? And the last thing I would say um, is don't be afraid to reach out to people, um, to other artists and to professionals in the industry. Um, I feel like that's something that. I know when I was getting into the industry, I was never, uh, I, it was a weird thing because I didn't, I never felt scared to ask people questions and you would be surprised at how few people do that um, because I feel like most people are afraid to talk to people because they're like, well, well, they're a professional, they're too busy or whatever like that. And honestly, pretty much every single person you'll contact in the industry will get back to you and talk to you about things because we've all been there. We and all we're love still movies, there. The same you know? movies. We love Legos. We yeah. love. <laughs> <laughs> we're all we're all still there in a lot of ways. I mean, I still have a lot of questions, and I'm in the industry, you know. And I'm never. And I just say, okay, I'm gonna just talk to people around, um, and just never lose that, um, because people will see that as you wanting to learn, and they'll be more apt to help you because they'll see that inspiration, that ins that that fire that you have for it, and wanting to get in. So, yeah, that's awesome. Let's play. Can you guys see the screen? Yay. Let's play the short film. Hopefully there's audio. Yeah, let's turn the light off.
How do we get the audio up? Is it on the computer? No, we're all the way up. Oh, uh, maybe these. Hold on. Let's just. Yeah, we're all the way up. Oh, yeah, we are. Dude, that's way too complex for me. Right click the volume button. How do you right click? Yeah, it looks like we're 100%. Other click? Other click? And then click. Volume mixer. Yeah, we're already up. No, we might not be able to watch it. You guys want to watch it in silence? <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that'll work. Let's see. Yeah. Are you guys hearing it? I hear it, but and I don't know where it's playing from. Oh, oh is it? Dude, that's it sucks to watch this without it. You guys won't understand anything. It's plenty of dialogue in there. Is there a tech person in the room? <laughs> I can't hear what did you say. What did you say? I said, can you call my supervisor? Can you call your supervisor? We continue the questions and then we can watch it with audio. Yeah. Thank you, man. What All right. Questions you got? How about here? Your mentor said that. <laughs> I I had to be honest. It's my life story. I thought okay. I was your mentor. <laughs> um, um, I don't think that there's obviously that I don't think that there's anything wrong with going to an art school. Um, just to say that, um, because I feel like everyone's path has to take a different way. Um, I know for me, it was something that I went to an art school for a time, and then I found and I actually found out what I wanted to do in that art school because I wanted to be a concept artist. For Square Enix because I love Final Fantasy, so um, and I ended up taking an animation class and l falling in love with it. Um, as far as finding someone uh, to teach you, that's a little bit harder to kind of explain. You know, as far as I think it's some something that you you can reach out to people and talk to them and ask them about it. And like I said in the previous question, I think that that's a thing that most people don't do. Um, but I feel like uh, in a lot of ways, doing things online, like online classes and stuff like that, is a place that you can find mentors as well. You know, I, I know that when I went to Animation Mentor, obviously I was paying for the classes, but a lot of my contacts in the industry I actually found through that. And so when I was taking that class, I was asking a bunch of questions. I was asking about the industry. And that was my way to basically start kind of networking and doing things. And even coming to places like this, you can talk to people and find people that are willing to talk to you and wanting to help you learn. Um, so I wish it was an easy thing to say, like, well, go to this website, and there is a bunch of mentors that are signing up for this thing, you know, and you can find one here through this giant list of things. Um, but I do feel like that concept is coming back a lot in the industry where a lot of this is a trade and not necessarily something that you, and so finding someone to help you through that, even if you're going to a school, is great to have because they can show you the ropes in a way that schools really can't because it's more academic, you know? Um, and there's just life experience things that you learn from a person who's willing to kind of walk beside you as a mentor, so. Um, and I've had a lot, I've had a lot of them in my, in my career, um, not just one, um, and so, um, yeah, and I know that I'm starting to kind of become that for some people as well, and so it's cool to kind of be able to give back as well, but I hope that kind of answered the question, but yeah. And one thing, guys, is the industry is exploding right now. The, the, the amount of content that's going to be made in the next 10, 20 years is huge. All you guys are going to get it. You just have to work hard and be patient. You know, it, it, it's you can't rush being an artist. You, ca you just can't rush it. Some people will do it quickly, don't get intimidated by it. 
there are, you know, there are some of you guys that will be really fast at it. Some of you guys will take a little bit longer. But don't give up. Keep working hard because, you know, you guys will all make it. There's so much work out there right now, and it's not going anywhere. So, you know, keep working hard, and you guys will all make it. And like Ben said, you know, reach out. You know, reach out to us. We are all mentors. We are very much, our studio is very much, we believe in growing, you know, you guys and, and you know, developing talent. Uh, uh, so we, we do that at the studio. So reach out to us. Okay. So we got this working. You know how this works? You just press play. Just right. press play. What did he do? Did he plug it in? Yes. No. Push the button. The one that he was pushing. What? Lift it up. That yeah. one. I thought you were looking at it. I was. I you was doing it was on. It's not that one. Press no. Oh, it. we have oh, the supervisor oh. here. You got. It. No, no, no. It's not that one. It's. It is. Yeah. I think these aren't on though. He was doing. He was doing the button. No, but he turned it on. <laughs> this guy. I play. Do you guys mute it? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it's muted. It was no. just working. Yeah. Oh, turn it up, bro. <laughs> oh, wait. Try the Let me try one. the other one. Uh, we got these guys. The yeah, yeah, I did the headphones one. Did the headphones one. Oh, headphones? Hold on, I got this. Fat fingers. Do it. Got this. Are you alright? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm in. Kent, did you just open your helmet? <coughs> no, that would probably hurt. Just something stuck in my throat. <coughs> in my helmet. Uh, anyway, which way am I going? Straight ahead for 200 feet. At the end of the hallway, turn right. There should be a sign that directs you to the whale tanks. And please, Kent, switch on your camera. I just thought since there was lights on and gravity that there would be air to breathe. This station has been orbiting a red dwarf for the past few decades. It has an unlimited source of solar energy. However, I fear the atmospheric generator might have malfunctioned at some point. Yeah, makes sense, I guess. Hey, this is fun. Look at me out here doing this, huh? Come on. Kent, I am still not comfortable with you out in the field. This one time is simply an attempt to boost your morale since your cookbook was rejected. Sila, they didn't even read it. They... they didn't even give me a chance. We'll pitch your cookbook to the Intergalactic Network. I am sure they will see your vision. Little do they know of the wonderful flavors of Earth dishes, Sila. 
the savory cuisines of Latin America, the spicy taste of Indian curries. Ken, is that it? We're close, Sila. Whoa. Are you seeing this? Yes, it's a space capsule that's attached itself to the station. It's not emitting any heat. It's been here for a while. I am searching the high database for the sigil. Someone else might be in there with you, Kent. The sensors show no motion or any heat signatures, but I think you should head back to the ship. I'll take over from here. No, 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 no. I, I've got this. You just said there's nothing on the sensors, so let's not get carried away. I've got my blaster. Ugh. I disagree. Stay on your guard. This is exciting. Open door? Open door. Tasted 258 years ago. It's sea salt. Kent, get out now. There's something to do. I can't hear you. Use the auxiliary channel, the blue button. How about now? Yes. Now head back to the ship. Ah! Kent, get out now. Kent. Oh, pickles. Shield. Kent, shoot the eye. Yep, no good. Use this one. Well, that's handy in a pinch. But, Sila, I'm gonna be just as bad with a bigger pinch. 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 Kent, Pinch. focus. Uh, hold on a minute. You have 3.7 seconds. Kent, focus. We have a brain and you throw better than you shoot we're done here let's get the salt and leave hey did you notice the sigil on that killer robot yes same as the one on the space capsule and it's also the sigil of the plague drifters allies to the syndicate huh i wonder what it was looking for it doesn't matter the syndicate is not an enemy we want what's next on the list oh Right. Cinnamon. I think I'll probably take lead on that one, too. Not a chance. What? Well, but I'm still depressed about my cookbook. But you'll live. So that was uh, um, a short film we, we made, what, three years ago? And since then, we've been developing the full TV show. We actually wrote a book uh, that uh, we might be releasing as well with the TV show. We don't know yet, but, um, but we're going to share a little bit of uh, what 
you know, what this TV show will be about. Um, I don't know if we're allowed to do that, but we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone, I own the company. <laughs> um, is it this one? All right, so we'll share this with you guys. What if you believe that the fate of humanity itself hinged on sharing Earth's descent with the rest of the universe? What if 250 years ago, an alien species waged a vicious assault on Earth, leaving behind nothing but a lifeless, charred rock floating in space? Welcome to the universe of Spice Frontier. As you can imagine, the supply of authentic Earth ingredients has become rather depleted. But human chef Kentucky Williams hasn't given up hope. He and the crew of the Serrano are searching for the interplanetary migrants who escaped Earth before its demise. Since the release of the multi-award winning Spice Frontier short film in 2020, the team at Steamroller Animation has been hard at work developing that initial concept into a full TV series. The season opener launches viewers headfirst into the action with a thrilling space chase in disguise above a strange alien planet. But giant purple space lobsters are just the first of many challenges the Serrano crew will have to face. They are coming from underground. Weapons up. Will these spice hunters be able to survive when they themselves become the hunted? Will Kent realize his dream of an Earth cuisine renaissance? Or does his true destiny lie elsewhere? See how the Spice Frontier saga unfolds. Coming soon from Steamroller Animation. Where is this oasis? Hey, there we go. So that was a little tease of what, uh, what we have uh, cooking. Josh, is it going to be done soon? Totally. <laughs> Next week, I told you. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Uh, but uh, so yeah. Hey, I want to thank like everybody for being here, too. And, and, and any last questions? We have, a, like, two minutes. How about over here? Tips on? World building for your own IP. Wow, that's exactly what we're doing right now. So. Um, tips. I mean, do it. I mean, honestly, it's it. You can't chase for right now. For us, we're not chasing anybody. You know, we decided we're gonna do it. You know, we build a studio together, and uh, you know, we we're self-funded. You know, we we d uh, we didn't go out there and a lot. Of, you know, you guys will will realize there's a lot of uh, stories out there, a lot of storytellers out there. But what happens? What happens is, you know, you take your story, you bring it to one of the bigger distributors. And they take your story, you know. Yes, you get paid for it, and sometimes the story can get can get made, but a lot of times it doesn't because there's so many people with ideas and stories. So what we decided to do is we're gonna we're gonna just make make stuff, and uh, we started you know taking work from other studios, you know, to to help them with their animation projects, and we saved every penny that we were making, all the profits we were making. Right, I guess so. Yeah, you would you would save save it. You know, my dad always say, you know, save your money and do it yourself. Don't ask don't ask for anybody to make your stuff. So we've saved for eight years, and now we're at a point where we're like, hey, let's make the first episode of Spice Frontier, which is 32 minutes. That's a third of a feature film, and we are writing our second big project, which is Master. Have you guys seen the teaser for Master? Yeah. yeah. Look us up. <laughs> you know, steam animation. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so I would say, honestly, do it because somebody might see it. Right now, we're getting a lot of people approaching us because they are seeing what we are doing. But unless you actually do it and show what you can do, it's hard. It's really hard to, to get your IP going because who will believe in you because there are many of you. Not, my dad said that to me, you're not special, but that's not what I mean. I'm, 
You know, that's insane to me. You know what I mean, man. So you know, it's there's a lot of special. All of you guys are special, you know, and all of you guys have you have your own stories. But why you, right? Sometimes going the extra mile gives the the, the confidence to that company with the money to go. He's gone the extra mile. We are going the extra mile right now by just developing it ourselves. Yep. One more. How about in the back? So for me, I'll, I'll answer. Uh, for me, I feel like it's uh, a couple things. Um, one, there's a sincere passion for the stories that we're telling. We're not um, we're we're not kind of just fishing around for an idea because we want to make a movie. We're making a movie that we believe in that has a message that comes from us that's inherent to us. And to be honest with you, because we're smaller, I'm coming in as a creative director. I can put my fingerprints on that, right? Like I I am. Um, integral to the effort um, and I mean certainly there's there's um, that exists at larger studios as well but for me it's like I, I'm, I'm more into the DNA of the company and you know even you know Jalil's even inviting us to pitch our own ideas and to you know uh, you know I know he has a, a huge focus of us being a storytelling driven studio as as a whole so that doesn't just mean Jalil has ideas and we make them, that means he's inviting us to pitch our own ideas and we get to be potentially creatives on our own own, own shows and things like that. So that kind of um, access and that kind of opportunity doesn't exist everywhere, um, and it's huge. And I would say on top of that, um, there's pros and cons, obviously, at big studios and smaller studios, but personally for me, I have actually really enjoy working at smaller studios um, because – like Josh said, you have more of a fingerprint, but also um, for me, I like to wear more ha more than one hat because I get antsy to work on multiple things. So, um, and at smaller studios, you tend to be able to have the opportunity to work on in multiple avenues of the process. Um, and so it's not for everyone. Um, some people are really good at, at and want to just do one thing extremely well, and that's great. Um, and I still have obviously my major focus is that I want to be really, really good at. Um, but you learn a lot of ancillary things at a smaller studio as well. You learn how the whole pipeline works in a way that you just don't get at a big studio. I mean, when you're when you're you know 800 people deep, you just don't see the pipeline the same way as you do in a 200 person studio or even 50 or 100 person studio. So um, it's a different. You know, I, I think that. I know for me, when I was first getting into the industry, you know, I was looking at the bigger studios and seeing that as something that I really wanted to do. Um, but as I've worked at small, I worked at bigger places and I worked at smaller places. And um, don't let there be a stigma against smaller places either. Um, I know that that was something that I tended to have when I was younger. Um, and uh, yeah, I've met some of the most incredible artists in smaller studios that I would have never met. Um, so, yeah, we're all out. We're all together in it. We're all trying to make our, you know, art. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if that helped. So I'll say, you know, every big studio is small ones. Just remember that you could be part of the fabric of a studio. And, you know, I I'm not saying we're going to be big, you know, but, you know, we're going to try our best to tell our stories. And uh, that's our goal. We're not a business to make money. We're a business to tell stories. And we truly believe in it. So look us up. Cool. If you have any other questions, we have a we have our own booth, so you guys can come yeah, over and ask us any questions. I know that we didn't get to answer everyone's questions, but yeah, we love to talk about stories and movies and stuff. Uh, we're here today. Yeah, yeah we're, we're here, here all weekend. Okay. Thirteen ten. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Thank you guys. Cool. Thanks awesome. Guys. Thank you. <laughs>